Log on, tune in, find out. Cambridge Ideas, transforming tomorrow. Please drive to highlighted route. Oh no, look, it's blocked up there. Recalculating. Continue 0.3 miles, then turn left. I think there's a barrier in the middle of the road. See? Bollards. Now what, clever clogs? Continue 0.3 miles, then turn left. You're fired. I love gadgets like GPS satellite navigation systems. But I hate the fact that they're so difficult to use. I think they were designed by sadists. The problem is that computers don't react to how I feel, whether I'm pleased or annoyed. They just ignore me. Can I help you? No, not really, thank you. I'll come back a little later. I will help you then. No, you won't. I'll come back a little later. Go away. My name is Peter Robinson, and I'm building emotionally intelligent computers. Ones that know how I feel. Ones that can read my mind. When I talk to people, I pick up emotions from things like their facial expression and their tone of voice, and I change tack accordingly. Computers are really good at understanding what we're typing, or even what we're saying but they need to understand not just what we're saying, but how we're saying it. My facial expression is one key way of understanding me. So I'm making a computer system that can sense my feelings in the same way. A camera tracks feature points on my face and calculates head gestures and facial expressions. These are then interpreted as combinations of 400 predefined mental states. So frowning while shaking my head might indicate disagreement, but just shaking a head alone might indicate confusion. I really think we should go straight on. Another system analyzes my tone of voice, the tempo, the pitch, the energy, and interprets these using the same predefined mental states. That looks like a really bad idea to me. When I speak, the way that I say things is almost as important as what I say. Oh, you stupid machine. That's it. Not played, yes. Very good. I also express my feelings through movement of my body. When I'm angry, my gestures are big and forceful. When I'm sad, they're small and gentle. My system tracks my body posture and gesture and interprets this using the same set of mental states. Combining these three measures, the computer can correctly read my mind over 70% of the time. And that's as well as most people can understand me. But that's not enough. I want the computer to respond. I want it to be emotionally expressive too. OK, now we're going to film a couple of your facial expressions. So if you... Okay. Can you do angry, please? OK, okay. baffled. Confused. OK, cheeky. Now I can make an expressive face on the computer screen, but how do I bring it out into my world so that we can really communicate? I started with Virgil the Chimp and found that people responded even to his expressions. But clearly we needed something that looked a bit more like a human. So we tried Elvis, but he just curled his lip. So this is Charles. I've just had him built. He has cameras in his eyes so that he can monitor my expression, 
and there are 24 motors controlling muscles in his face so that he can respond expressively as well. He's very handsome. I'm trying him out as a navigator in my driving simulator to see if he's a bit more friendly than my GPS. Let's go home. No problem, Peter. Thank you. In 100 metres, take a left turn. Hmm, it looks a bit crowded. Should we try straight on? Good idea. Let's try that. Thank you. My pleasure. The way that Charles and I can communicate shows us the future of how people are going to interact with machines. Charles, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> <laughs>